Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight here with my latest video, which is essentially to talk about the upcoming new moon, which is going to be in the sign of Virgo. Now, I'm a galactic and intuitive astrologer. So what I do with these videos is to bring you some insight, some information um, about each of these sort of key astrological events. And, you know, you're going to no doubt hear some repetition in what other astrologers are saying when I talk about the energies of this new moon and the chart. Um, but I also bring in some of the fixed star galactic and cosmic influences as well and try and um, again through um, a perhaps more intuitive approach bring in something hopefully slightly different to add to um to what i share with you as well so um if you are interested um i do offer readings um so you can find out about my work at spiralbright.co.uk and um, when I am working with the galactic and fixed star alignments, I am using the galacticastrochart.com um, website. You can access a free version of your galactic birth chart on that website. Um, so I will share um, the sort of key alignments for the new moon when we get to that part of this video. But without um, any further ado, um, and I hope that light isn't too distracting Um it's, it doesn't look like that in the room, but obviously the camera's picking it up. So, um, yeah, looks quite cool on the screen. Anyway, um, so new moons. This new moon is on the 2nd or the 3rd of September, depending on where you are in the world. For the UK um, watchers amongst us, it is at 2.55 a.m. on the 3rd, and it is taking place at 11 degrees Four minutes of Virgo. Now, the new moon is um, the point in the lunar cycle, which is when the sun and the moon meet exactly at the same degree point and minute of the respective sign. And um, so this is really um, a time when, you know, we can't see the moon in the sky. It's as if the moon has gone dark. And it is very much about um, sort of being given the opportunity to start something new. There's the real sort of metaphor here of a seed being planted. The seed needs the darkness to be able to germinate. So, you know, we're working with the period of gestation within the lunar cycle. And um, it's almost like the womb and um, where, you know, we are held within this dark space um, to allow something to be born, to be created out of the darkness. Um, and because the sun and the moon are together, their en energies are blending, they're merging together. So there is no separation. Of course, the sun representing, you know, our life force, our self-identity, our expression and the moon and um, the more sort of internal, reflective, emotional response to our world. And um, so it's where the conscious and the subconscious become one. And, you know, it is also a time of reset. So whatever you sort of are going to put out there at this time, it may take some time to manifest and to sort of um, be created in reality, but it's certainly a really strong time to start thinking about what you want to bring in. And you know, always work with the sign that the new moon um, is working with. So in this case, that is Virgo. Now, when we are working with Virgo, this is mutable Earth. It is the sixth sign in the zodiac. And Virgo is very much um, a sign that or an energy that needs to be busy. Virgo needs a purpose. Virgo wants to make a difference, to be of service. And um, Virgo is also very much about bringing order. So, you know, this is a real time when we can start to think both personally and collectively about where perhaps things do need streamlining, where things need putting into some sort of um, greater order perhaps than they have been. And of course, when we're thinking about bringing order to something, there is the assumption that things are out of order, that there is disorder, potentially even chaos. So this is a really you know, beautiful energy to start looking at um, how we can really improve our situation again that is personal and collective so virgo wants to streamline you know it is a great time of year in the zodiac calendar to maybe think about decluttering 
again that can be in on the physical level so that might be sort of sorting out your home and um, but also you know your mind and um, if you're feeling overwhelmed which is quite common when Virgo is strong you know it is very much about decluttering and also detoxing because Virgo is about purification and detoxing so with Virgo, you know, we are called to be discerning. So to really um, be mindful of what we are taking in, what we are digesting. And again, you know, that can be in our physical world. So we might be thinking about starting a new regime, a new diet, a new exercise program, you know, thinking about the kind of foods we're eating, the supplements we're taking. But it's also about the information that we are being exposed to and we are processing because that is also digested. Um, um, so, you know, again, it is being mindful that perhaps there is a lot of information and noise out there, but it is being really discerning about what it is that you are exposing yourself to and what you're taking on board. And um, Virgo is also the Virgin. So there is this energy of the sacred divine mother. And with the Virgo Pisces axis, Virgo is very much at the physical end, whereas Pisces is the more spiritual, the more divine um, end of the axis divinity into form but very much focusing on the physical expression and the physical experience at this time because it is a new moon in Virgo. Virgo of course also connected to the harvest which you know in certainly in the UK at this time of year all the farmers are out and um, gathering their crops so again, you know, a time to really think about you know, how far you come, what are you um, able, you know, where are you getting the benefits of all the hard work? There's this sort of um, element of reaping what you have sown at this time. But Virgo, you know, really needs order, needs to streamline, needs to make things work more efficiently. So again, you know, whether this is something that you are doing in your personal world or whether we're thinking about it sort of at a more collective level, you know, this is a real time to really look at where have things just gone crazy and how can we bring things back to be more simple, to be more structured and really to be less stressful because when we are overwhelmed with Virgo, you know, it will affect our nervous system. We can have too much going on in our head because Virgo is ruled by Mercury. So again, it is being mindful, you know, not to step into that sort of perfectionist um, realm that comes with Virgo if you are sort of wanting to be too useful, too helpful and do too much and, and to get everything right all the time. Again, it's finding that balance. So what is really interesting with this chart, and I will put it, share it in a minute, um, but what has struck me, and I'm not sure that you're necessarily going to hear any other astrologers saying this, um, so I am going out on a bit of a limb here, but to me, when I look at this chart, um, the sun and the moon are very much on their own. Now, there is a wider position between the sun and the moon in Virgo to Saturn in Pisces but the degree of the orb is five degrees so it is quite wide and so less influential um so you know for me the sun and the moon are not interacting with any of the outer planets or any of the other personal planets at this point in the chart in the year so there is this sense of um coming back to a space in time where there is you know there is the ability to release any of the outside influences to come back into the self to really step into that earthly grounding virgo energy come back to the body to the physical experience the physical expression and you know not to be over influenced um, by anything that is going on out there. Now, of course, that also means that there's no support from the other planet. So it is a time where perhaps we're going to be expected to go it alone, but it's about finding the strength and the opportunity through that. And um, it's about coming into being um, into that stillness and being able to sort of switch off from all the outer noise and drama, because believe me, there is a ton of it. And I will sort of highlight what's going on through the chart there's also because so many of the outer planets are now in retrograde motion at the time of this new moon 
there's all, also this sort of drawing inwards. And whenever we're working with retrograde energy in the chart, you know, it is a time to be introspective, to review, to kind of go over things perhaps that we missed before. But again, it's very much about coming within and all the experiences are going to be much more internal than perhaps they would be when everything is in direct motion. The other thing I wanted to say, this new moon um, marks the start of the eclipse season because it is a Virgo new moon. The next full moon um, or the next lunation is in Pisces and that is the first of the Virgo Pisces eclipses. And that is later on this month. So, again, it's about preparing for, you know, what lies ahead, which, you know, with eclipses, anything can happen. They're wild cards, but they always bring transformation and change. So um, and that chart, the eclipse chart is quite um, powerful as well when we get to it. So um, the other thing I wanted to say so much to say about this new moon is the fact that the 11th degree really stands out to me and um, the 11 is kind of a number of um for me it's a very spiritual number it represents channeling you have this sort of direct line between the higher self with the universe and the physical the body and um you know, it's about bringing information through that feels very pure. Again, you know, it's like it's coming straight down. There is no influence. There is no sort of control. There's no manipulation. It's very direct. It's very pure. So, again, it's having that access to something new that is coming in and it's straight in, you know, no messing. Um, there is also kind of this... Um, kind of sense with the 11 of the mirror so um whatever state you are managing to claim for yourself at this time and remember it's a new moon so you're starting a new cycle is something that is going to then be reflected out so if your inner sort of state of being your mind your physical body is in a state of chaos and turmoil then that is likely to be reflected back at you through your experience of what is going on out there however at this time, it really feels to me that we are being invited to drop into our stillness, into the body, into our sense of sacred devotion. And, um, you know, think about decluttering, getting rid of all the stuff, the dross that we don't need that is feeling overwhelming. And, you know, when we are able to do that, then the outer world will reflect that back. And of course, if enough of us are able to do that, you know, this is when things really start to shift in the collective. So, you know, there is a lot of really beautiful potential with this new moon. But let's look at the chart. So as you can see, I've got a few extra um, asteroids highlighted here. I won't be talking about all of them today, but this is the new moon chart for me in Bedford in the United Kingdom, which is one of the closest towns to me. As you can see, we've got the sun and the moon together at 11 degrees, four minutes of Virgo, as I said. And then there is that sort of wider opposition with Saturn in retrograde opposing in Pisces. So, you know, the influence is there, but it's not as strong. It With Saturn in opposition, it's like just kind of, making sure that we are being quite serious, quite responsible, quite grown up about whatever it is that we are bringing in. You know, it is asking us to slow down, but it is also asking us to make sure that we are considering the more spiritual aspects. So again, you know, there's that sort of on this um, Pisces Virgo axis. It's about making sure that we are taking into account, um, you know, our spiritual side, spiritual truths, spiritual lessons, and, you know, having compassion as well. I'm going to talk about Pluto, which, as you'll see, um, is 29 degrees, 58 minutes of Capricorn. Now, Pluto, the day before the new moon in the UK, certainly, on the 2nd of September, Pluto, which is in retrograde motion, steps back into sign of Capricorn. Now, this is a really big deal. You know, you've heard me talk about the 29 degree points, um, you know, in many of the videos. This is known as the anoretic or the crisis degree. And what's significant this time is that this is the last time Pluto is going to be in Capricorn for another I think it's about 240 years because of the length of Pluto's cycle and transit around the zodiac. So, you know, Pluto has been moving into the early degrees of 
um, Aquarius going back into Capricorn, into Aquarius again. This is the last time he's going to step into Capricorn. So there is a real sense here that, you know, the next few months between now and the middle of November, when Pluto finally moves into Aquarius, it's not coming back here again for some time for the foreseeable. And um, there is this real sort of rush to complete any of the work that Pluto still needs to do in Capricorn, which is about dismantling and breaking down old structures of the Capricornian theme. So we are talking about institutions, we are talking about big um, sort of corporate um, businesses and setups that have no that have seen their day they're no longer in alignment with our evolution and our soul growth we are talking about the patriarchal system you know so we're likely to see an even faster crumbling and dismantling of all these old themes and you know this is very much you know on time it's where we're going it's where we're heading but we may kind of feel even more unstable over the next couple of months as things really do start to fall apart but it is about knowing that this is for our greatest good that this is where you know the world needs to go if we are to step into a high level of consciousness and obviously you know Pluto is there to make sure that this part of the job is done thoroughly so we're working with this 29 degree of Capricorn in a sextile to Neptune, also in retrograde at 29 degrees of Pisces in the final degree of the entire zodiac. And then if we look across here, we can also see that Pluto is now in an Earth trine with Uranus at 27 degrees. Now, Uranus is also just stationed retrograde two days before this new moon chart. And um, so again, you know, there is the sense because Uranus is now in retrograde motion and is starting is going to sort of build up momentum in this direction in this um sort of modem in this way of moving you know it is about bringing some instability um, and possibly disorder and chaos but at a more internal level so again just to be mindful of that but know that this is very much part of our evolution and our soul growth and our transformation so trusting that you know if things are feeling very unstable and unsure things are coming out of left field there's lots of unexpected things taking place you know you're feeling quite wobbly um you know just be mindful that you know this is all part of the plan and again with Neptune here at sort of the apex of this triangle here Neptune is also dissolving things sort of making sure that you know anything that is karmic that needs to be released to re be removed can has the opportunity but neptune is also very much about vision and bringing in sort of creativity and imagination and our dream world um so you know, neptune is playing quite a big part in this kind of um whole theme of endings and letting go so that we can move into the new because of course when neptune finally moves in forward motion it will be moving into the sign of Aries which is like an entirely brand new start so that's something to look forward to next year just looking at what else is going on so the ruler of this chart is Mercury Mercury's Virgo's ruler and that is at 23 degrees 16 minutes of Leo down here quite close to you know just in the sign next to the moon it's going to be moving back into Virgo very soon um, and you know now in direct motion having been in retrograde fairly recently Mercury in Leo wants to sort of shine a light on information and understanding it's very much about the ha having courage to see things to understand things and to speak up to talk about things perhaps you know that you haven't had the courage um or, you know, the confidence to be able to do so before. So, you know, if there is information coming out and that is kind of a given, you know, we are in this process of um, lots of disclosure and information being um, shared and coming to light. You know, again, Mercury is now not afraid to speak up and to shout about it and to share it. And of course, if you look up to the top of this chart here, we've got Chiron at 22 degrees, 54 minutes of Aries. So this is creating a really beautiful trine. So again, you know, this um, Chiron being the wounded healer, so the, the wound of identity, 
and of the self. And this shows that, you know, Mercury in, in Leo is having the confidence and the courage to really stand up, to speak his or her truth, to speak our truth, to speak your truth, to be seen and um, to really start to understand things in perhaps a more wholesome way. And, you know, the potential for healing that comes through that is really, really beautifully supported with this trine here. Now, Mercury at 23 is also in a wide square to Uranus. So we've had this before when Mercury was in retrograde um, at the time of the previous full moon. So the influence is still there. But again, you know, with the square, there is lots of sort of growth. Um, there is some tension here. But again, it is likely, as I said, alluded to, that there is still information coming to light Certainly that, you know, is unexpected, can be quite shocking, is going to be quite destabilizing with the Uranian influence here. But again, Mercury is not afraid to talk about it. And as Mercury moves forward, he's going to come into an exact square with Uranus in a couple of days time. So again, this is just building up the energy now. We've got Saturn in Pisces at 16 degrees, still in a square to Jupiter, which I talked about in my last um, full moon video. Jupiter wanting to expand our understanding, perhaps expand the division and the choices that we're faced with at this time. Time, but it has this sort of squaring up against Saturn, which is really, again, consider, you know, the karmic implications of this. Consider, you know, thinking about every everybody, about the unified approach. Have compassion. You know, don't start trying to take sides and be divisive. And also make sure that everything is coming from a real sort of spiritually mature perspective at this time so you know that square is still very much active at this time and if we look down at the bottom of the chart we can see that Venus is conjunct the south node in Libra so very close together also we have black moon Lilith here as well and this again is about making sure that anything that we are letting go of or that are moving away from is very much in alignment with our values and that we see the worth of that because Venus is about worth. It's about relationships. It, it's about what we love, but it is also about what we value. So for me in this chart, it is just making sure that, you know, whatever we are letting go of and moving away from through that South Node influence. And in Libra, it is about anything that is taken us out of balance, is creating disharmony. That also applies to relationships, which, you know, are not for our greatest good, that may be codependent, out of balance, out of alignment with who we are and where we're going, that we actually understand the purpose and the value of it. And again, with this black moon Lilith here as well, that is being able to kind of go into the shadow and to, again, see the value of the shadow work that we might be required to do at this time. And of course, you've got this lovely and repeating five here, the five being the number sort of the pivot point, the midway between all the numbers one to nine about change, about adventure, you know, again, about that tipping point. And before we go on to the galactic chart, I'll just point out that Mars 2856, which is almost at the anoretic degree of Gemini here, is in a quite a tight square with Neptune. In fact, it's very tight. Um, just a few minutes in between both to create that square. So again, Mars wants the detail, it wants the information. Gemini is about information, it's about facts, it's about communication, it's talking, it's sharing, it's ideas. Um, but you know, with the square to Neptune in Pisces, right at that final degree, again, it's very similar to the Saturn sort of square with Jupiter. It's just making sure that, you know, whatever is coming up, whatever is being shared, whatever is being talked about, whatever decisions we're having to make, whatever sides we're being asked to take, that we are taking taking into account this higher perspective through Neptune in Pisces, making sure, you know, that we are considering the wider perspective, you know, stepping into that sort of unity consciousness through Pisces, making sure that we are bringing, you know, that vision of unity consciousness and the universal mind and the more spiritual approach into the equation you know you cannot have one without the other when there is a square but they both have to find a way to work together and of course Neptune being the outer planet 
is stronger here. So Mars can't ignore the influence of Neptune. So let's look now the galactic chart. And this is the chart that I have set up through the galacticastrochart.com calculator um, for the time in the UK. And we can have a look at some of the key galactic alignments. So first of all, I'm actually going to talk about an alignment that isn't showing on this chart because not all of the fixed stars that are out there are included in the calculator I think there's about 64 or 67 perhaps of the sort of main fixed stars and cosmic points in here but of course there are many more and I wanted to talk about a star called Alioth which is in the Ursa Major constellation that's the Big Dipper or the Great Bear and Alioth is the brightest star in this constellation and it is currently at um, nine degrees of Virgo. So very close to the sun and the moon at this new moon. And if we think about bear symbology, you know, bears are strong, they're very powerful, but they also have a really strong connection to the natural world. They are said to be very wise, very powerful, and they also sort of instill courage. And when we're working with fixed star Alioth, which is lending its support to this new moon, to this ability to streamline, to declutter, to come back to the physical, to come back to the now, to step into that stillness and not be uh, sort of influenced by the noise and the craziness that is going on out there. It is helping us to access um, sort of a pure way of thinking, clarity of thought, it's also about integrity of being true to the self. It brings in creative thinking, helps us to remove and let go of any fear and certainly the fear or the perception of hardship, because, you know, this again is about reminding us that although things may seem really hard work and really challenging, that actually there is always purpose in everything. So again, this Alioth energy is helping us to access that. And it also gives us a slightly unique perspective again on the situation. So, you know, if we think that this star and um, this lunation is ruled by Mercury, which is the mind, Alioth is coming in to help us have a different perspective. And I'm going to just jump ahead actually and talk quickly about Mercury. So if we look down, I'll come back to the sun and the moon in a second, but if we look at Mercury, Mercury is in this trine with Razzle Hag or Razzle Hag in the Ophiuchus constellation. And this is the 13th star sign, um, one that is said to have been repressed or removed from our calendar. But for me, and somebody was asking about this on my channel quite recently, for me, this star is very much the star of transformation. It is linked to serpent energy, and um, which we have elsewhere in the chart. So it is linked to shedding skins, to releasing old versions of the self. And through Mercury, that is about understanding mindset information you know anything that um is out of alignment with the new has to go and so we're letting go of old ideas but it is also very much about the ability to go into the shadows into the depths into the underworld to kind of look at what is there and then to rise up in a sort of um sense of rebirth so there is kundalini awakenings and activations linked to this star as with alfard in hydra which i'll talk about in a second but for me it is also serves as a bridge between what we know, you know, our 12 zodiac signs and um, our chakra system that we work with and what is to come, which is essentially the fifth dimension and a higher level of consciousness. So it is really helping working with Mercury at this time to help us shed out outdated understandings, beliefs, stories, and to provide that bridge and that pathway forward to a sort of more higher enlightened way of being. And of course, the trines are always really harmonious and they flow effort effortlessly. So going back up to the sun and the moon, we have Alath Far, which is in the Lyra constellation. Again, you know, in a beautiful trine, in a beautiful supportive aspect. And Lyra really is the home of our human galactic history. There are associations here with toning, with sound, with music to help us to access healing, to help us to access that sort of inner world, that inner state of being. 
And this is also the heart star, which kind of brings us back to the home, to our family, what is important, to what is true. And it also connects us to the cycles of life, which, again, is something else that we find elsewhere in the chart. So we have these interesting squares as well with two of the royal stars, Aldebaran and Antares. And these are the royal stars that are associated with archangelic and much higher frequency energy. Aldebaran in particular is the star of enlightenment linked to Archangel Michael and the blue ray. So there's a real sense of strong protective energy here, but also a sense that, you know, we need courage at this time to be able to sort of move forward and shake out of perhaps where we might have become stuck. And Antares, again, you know, linked to um, rising of consciousness, spiritual enlightenment, wisdom, and the ascension process. So again, there is um, through the square that it doesn't necessarily mean that there is support there, but it is asking us to take into account this higher level of wisdom, this higher consciousness as we do move through this time and this new moon and whatever it is that we're bringing in, you know, these energies are really sort of forcing us to sort of have a higher mind, a higher perspective. So just moving down, I wanted to talk about, we've talked about Mercury already. Um, the other line that really stands out to me is this Mars in Gemini line. And because there are quite a lot of really strong alignments, conjunctions and oppositions. So we can see that Mars is conjunct Polaris and um, which in the Ursa minor constellation. So this is the North Star. This is effectively kind of showing us the way, giving us the information, being the guiding light, showing us where we need to go, where we need to evolve. And, you know, Mars is there very much ready to get going because obviously Mars in Gemini, you know, is about speed and movement and connection. The, the conjunction with Betelgeuse in the Orion constellation is also really interesting. And I've talked about Betelgeuse in a few of my previous videos. But this star, again, you know, Gemini is linked to the mind, to understanding. But it also, in particular, helps us to kind of get to grips with and understand and embrace the whole concept of the cyclical nature of our world and our existence. How everything comes back. You know, everything is evolving. It's like the spiral. You know, we have to things have to end in order for things to be reborn. Things have to be ended and cleared out to create the space for the new to come in. And it also kind of shows us and helps to or remind us that everything has purpose. So, again, you know, where we're working with this really quite um, crisis energy with Pluto back in Capricorn, you know, it is reminding us that there is purpose in that and that ultimately, you know, we are here to experience every aspect of being. And once we have done so, we can return to source, which is where ultimately we are all going at a soul level. Now, the opposition to the galactic centre, here is about having that access to a higher mind, higher divine wisdom, cosmic intelligence, cosmic information, seeing the bigger picture. And again, that is there. OK, it's in an opposition, so it's not quite integrated, but is there for the taking if we are willing to go for it and to reach out and to bring it in. Um, the Shapley attractor trying its slightly wider conjunction, but still within the four degrees that we would use for the cosmic points is about, you know, really helping us to um, connect to the frequency of truth, to remove all masks or anything that is not of integrity, anything that is out of alignment with truth is falling at this time with this connection with the Shapley attractor. And then we have an opposition to Etamin in the Draco constellation, which really, you know, is helping us to connect to dragon energy, which is very much about transformation, about protection, about this higher consciousness. But also with the dragons, you know, there is a real sort of sense that they are the guardians of the lands. And what is really interesting as well is that dragons and dragon energy wants to bring order back where there has been chaos so again you know we see this theme of the Virgo energy bringing that sort of order from chaos 
we've got quite a few other alignments here, but the other one I wanted to highlight is the square to Shiat in the Pegasus constellation, which of course is conjunct Neptune and sextile Pluto. So this is the way shower energy. This is um, the winged horse, the ability to rise up, to have a much higher and wider and broader perspective, to see things from a multi-dimensional and multi-galactic perspective and viewpoint, to really be able to see far ahead, you know, beyond the horizon almost to where we are heading and to have the courage and the speed and the ability to fly and to just go for it. So again, you know, that is really beautiful. And again, it is reminding us through the square you know, again, you know, we have to um, perhaps move out of this more um, dualistic and separate consciousness and approach where it's all about information and knowing and needing all the facts and just take that leap of faith, move into a more unity based consciousness, much higher um, level and way of seeing things, because that is where the growth lies. So we have Jupiter is conjunct Rigel and Bellatrix and also Nihal in the Lepus constellation. So um, I will talk about Nihal in particular. Um, I've talked about Rigel in a previous video, so please do go back and look at that. But Lepus in particular, Nihal in particular is associated with the blue ray. It's one of the blue ray stars. And Nihal and Lepus is linked also to the hair. So this brings in, um, you know, expansion and growth through magic, through wizardry, through the ability to manifest. It is about sort of seeing the potential in perhaps areas that we haven't noticed before, that we haven't explored before, um, helping to support our belief system because Jupiter is about our beliefs. And also, you know, Lepus, the hair is chased by the hunter but is out in front this is swift this is agile this is nimble energy um you know fleet of foot so again it's about that forward movement things changing things moving forward and being mindful as well of what you focus on where you put your mind because we are in this period now increasingly so where manifestation and um, energies are very strong so it is really important to be very specific and again the new moon and virgo is really supporting this and encouraging this to be really specific and really discerning about what it is you put your mind and focus to again what you digest what you are taking on board, you know, what you are bringing into your head, what you're reading, what you're listening to, et cetera, et cetera. Because, you know, where the focus, where the energy goes, no, is it where the focus goes, energy flows. Again, that is really important at this time. So we have talked about the impact and influence of Eridanus, Arcana on Saturn in Pisces, um, Arcana and Eridanus being linked to the river, to the journey, to flow, to accepting that, you know, things can change course. There is not a lot of structure or boundaries when Saturn is in Pisces, but it is about trusting that journey finding your flow and also very much linked to elemental energy as well. So again, there's that connection to the earth there and to magic. And of course, Phoenix, Phoenix's um, anchor star isn't shown here because that is not one of the stars um, included in this galactic astro calculator, but it is very close to Saturn in Pisces at this time. So this is about transformation. It is about the ability and the necessity to perhaps burn things down to the ground almost in a way that Pluto might do. Things are being deconstructed, dissolved and dismantled through all these energies in the chart. And this is about um, that requirement so that something beautiful and magical can be reborn. And again, it's having that faith that this is exactly what is going on. So we've talked about Algol being conjunct Tor um, Uranus and Taurus. So I'm not going to go into that um, in any detail because you can find videos on Algol in my YouTube um, back catalogue. But and we've also talked about, you know, the square with Uranus and Alphard and how that is really um, helping us to open our hearts, to kind of activate our Kundalini, to raise our consciousness and help us wake up. Neptune and Shiat, we've just talked about the energy of that star. And obviously, you know, Neptune is in a square to 
Mars. So these same energies are coming up again through this Neptune square. But I'll just um, briefly just mention this trine with Chiron and Razzle Hag again, because the trine to Mercury is fairly strong. It is about, you know, having this higher consciousness, using this energy as a bridge to a higher way of being, to the 5D way of being and understanding, which is deeply healing, which is helping us to really review and reassess, um, you know, our understanding of who we are, our identity, how we fit into the bigger picture. And again, you know, this fixed star energy is really supporting that. I hope you have enjoyed what I've had to share. You can sign up for my um, newsletter my monthly newsletter on um, my website spiralbright.co.uk and yeah please reach out please comment please let me know what you think how you're finding the energies um it's always really lovely to connect with like-minded souls um so yeah always lovely to hear from you if you do have the time or the inclination or the calling to reach out so thank you so much for watching and i will be back with you soon